Um, I'm not sure why. So for me to clean it, I just used to use Q-tips, which I might have some in here, but um, I think this works way better. And they're not very expensive. They're super inexpensive. And then um, I kind of show you this so you can just kind of see like the difference in 50 weight and 80 weight. So like the 50 weight, I mean, it's got a really nice stitch um, and everything, but you can't really see the thread, but you can see how you can really see the thread below. And this is the machine right here if y'all want to see it. Um, if y'all want to see a tutorial, I could do one. Um, I mean, I can't say I would like recommend the machine. I wouldn't definitely would not say like run out and buy it. It's very finicky. Um, I have like not very much patience. So, um, but I'm going to use it a lot. I just have to figure out uh, the quirks in it. Um, but you basically, the thread comes from the bottom and you don't use thread at the top at all. Um, but it's, um, it's a really cool machine. You know, I got it because a lot of people thought it was cool and they were using it. And so I just have to kind of figure out what is going to work best for it. I mean, the 40 weight or the 28 weight did work. It just was finicky and would break threads every now and then. So, um, I would probably just not do that again. Um, so do y'all have any questions? It's kind of hard because we don't have like both things going. So we're probably not gonna have as many questions today. We do have a lot of people that okay. to Instagram. Um, and just so everyone knows, we are recording on the other ends. Um, so worst comes stores, we can just post to YouTube later. Um, but someone is asking what kind of machine is it again? Okay, so it's called Baby Luck Sashiko. Um, I got the idea from Corey Yoder. She's the one who started the trend. And then like Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree has it. Um, a lot of people are posting their quilts online. And I do a lot of really small projects. And I don't I don't want to send it to my long arm quilter. I mean, he has like a, I think he has like a minimum charge of 40. So I mean, that would be a complete waste. So um, I'm just gonna try to make as many small quilts of $40 that I can make up the price of the machine. Um, but yeah, I got the idea from Corey um, Yoder. I can do a tutorial on how you use it if y'all are interested. It is very finicky. It is it is not something that you can just like bring to your sewing, sewing room and like just set up and like just start going. It is not that kind of machine. I've watched videos um, by a lady named Ebby um, I can't think of her last name right now, but she has some really cool videos on how you bought, how you do your bobbin, how you thread, um, and um, yeah, and you can set like how thick you want your stitch, like how long you want it to be, and how much space you want between your between your um, stitches. So you can um, just play with it. And I, of course, always have like a little swatch that I use to show, um, like just to test it out. Um, cause basically the type of batting you have, how thick it is, how thin it is, your thread, all that's going to change. So I might not do the same thing every time. Um, someone is asking which machine do you suggest for a bigger throat? So like, this is not a regular sewing machine. This is just something that would quilt, um, for a regular, for a throat, um, if you're going to be quilting. You know, I don't know. I would go to like your local machine um, store and just see. I have a baby lock. Um, what do I have? I have a crescendo. I've had it for a really long time. But that's what I, if I was going to quilt something and I wasn't going to use this, I would use my baby lock crescendo. Um, I think the throat is big enough, but there are plenty of machines that have much bigger. And to piece on, I just use a Juki 2010. It's like a really expensive, I mean, really inexpensive model. Um, I like something very simple for piecing, so, um, but yeah, I'm not really into big expensive machines, so I was actually shocked that I bought this. Um, it was, um, I got it at the quilt market, so I got it at a better price, but, um, this is not something normally I would just, like, run out and buy, because I kind of believe in, like, simplicity, like, I really believe that you do not need a big expensive machine to, like, quilt. Like, I don't believe you need to pay $10,000 for a machine to quilt. Like, this Juki was $900. So, um, yeah. All right. Let me see if I can get some questions that we had earlier. Okay. On YouTube. Um, let's go back. 
Here, I'm gonna stand over here. Oh, people are asking how much the machine was. So I paid fifteen hundred, um, but I think the like retail retail is supposed to be four thousand. Um, so I paid fifteen hundred plus shipping. Um, so yeah, it's I think it's expensive. I mean that's more than I paid for my regular sewing every day. But um, I mean I like it. Am I glad I bought it? Yes, but I. It's just so really expensive for it to be so finicky. Um, but I think that as I use it, that I will learn the tricks. And that's, uh, Pat Sloan has this machine and she kind of gave me, she said, you're gonna get totally frustrated, but once you get it down, it's gonna, it's gonna work better. So I'll probably make something else in the next month because I'm in the Sweetwater Club and she sends cute little projects like this, like little small things. And so when I get my next one, I'll probably um, just make something on there with the 40 weight and see how it works out. All right. Um, I don't know, because uh, you're going to start recording immediately at the beginning, if you want to kind of repeat like what you went over. Okay. So um, there's we have new fabric called Autumn Love by Lori Holt, and I, I like it. Um, and I had some leftover background from another project that actually I'll show y'all in a couple of weeks, but I had just a lot of leftover. And so I was like, well, what could I do with that? So I found um, this older book that I published with Lori Holt. It's called Great Granny Squared. And she had a lot of extra squares left over from making some of the blocks. So she used them for this label for her quilt. So I just took like my leftover backgrounds and um, the, like an older pattern I had and put this together. So you just need a background and then three fabrics and then just a charm pack or two charm packs. I used two charm packs because I didn't want to use a uh, background fabric, but you could probably get away with one, um, one charm pack, but it's just, you know, what can you, I, I feel like on the group and on the fact Photoshop page, um, sometimes people feel like they have to always be buying new, new, new. But to make this, I already had the background. I already had the book. I just had to buy a little bit of yardage. Um, and then like, I already had the applique glue. I already had the needles. I already had the interfacing. I have like a bunch of interfacing that's cut up. I just wanted to show you all the package, but I have a bunch of this that's like cut up. You know, I already kind of, I already um, had all the stuff. So, you know, I can make this for like $20 rather than, you know, going and making, you know, buying everything new. So um, I'm going to be showing y'all like kind of things you can do by just pulling stuff from your stash, using what you have, um, not always feeling like you have to go and spend a ton of money. Um, why don't we have this new batting and I was talking about why it's called Happy Cloud. Why I like it is they come in really small packages so that you don't have just this huge stuff and then there's not as much waste. So when you use this, I have my leftover in the closet, but you know, you can put it back in the bag and they're not as big. And so um, I kind of like those. Um, I use the new Lori Holt uh, templates. Lori actually made the sunflowers for me. Um, she has, if you go to the Be On My Bonnet blog, she has a tutorial on how you use her templates, which she has lots of them with her interfacing and then you flip it out um, and use a point turner or you can just use a chopstick again you don't have to buy a point turner or you can use pins which I've been known to do but they do go through and they do mess it up so I would probably not recommend that but I'm pretty lazy about um, applique so Lori actually made these um, for me and I just picked the one I wanted um, and put it on there but um, you know, it's summer. I like to do small projects. My kids are home. So I've got to like start and stop and do things that are smaller. Um, right now they're going to be going back to school in a week and a half and I cannot wait for the like, um, schedule, like they'll go to bed on time. And, um, yeah. Um, someone was asking where is Fat Quarter Shop located? So we're an online store. Um, if you go to fatquartershop.com, you can find all of these great things. But you know, like on this project, a lot of you already have this book. A lot. Like this is a really popular book. So a lot of you have this book. 
a lot of you have a charm pack sitting in your stash. A lot of you have a background sitting in your stash. So this is something you could maybe even just do with, um, with what you have. Um, instead, you know, like if you just wanted a quick weekend project, you can just like, that's what I'll do. I'll just go and I have like a little area and I have all my books and I'll just go through my books and oh, what do I have leftover fabric? I keep all my leftover fabric in here. You know, for like gifts, for Christmas, stuff like that. All right. Um, we don't have any more questions coming in from Instagram. Um, someone was uh, saying they would love to see how the machine works. Um, I don't okay. know if you want to show that. Yeah, I'll show it. I think we should do a video separately on that. Um, and I can do that. I can probably just film that at work. Uh, yeah. But I can do that. Like, if y'all are interested, I will definitely show you. I am not in any way saying you need that machine. In any way. I just think the stitch is cool and um, just wanted to show you. But yeah, if y'all are interested, I can show you. I'm not the best at it, but I could I could show you my way. Yeah, we do have quite a few requests for that. Um, yeah. And some people uh, who tuned in from Facebook and YouTube are asking if this will be redone later. Um, and we are recording right now, so they will be able to watch on YouTube and Facebook later in the day today. Yeah, so what's going to happen is I'm going to go to work. Lily's going to go to work. We're going to take the video, and then you can upload it. So, like, I live pretty far from work. So give her, like, two hours because we got to pack everything up, and she'll post it, and then you can watch the whole thing. Yeah. And then also, um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Fat Quarter Shop. Subscribe to Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. We almost have 100,000 followers on Instagram. We're going to give away a $200 gift certificate. So, um, to, you know, somebody who's a subscriber, um, follow my group, Kimberly Stitch Squad. It's a really positive community. Um, where people, you know, will say, oh, I saw this quilt on Pinterest and I love it. Does anybody know where the pattern is? And I guarantee somebody's going to know. Or I have this old fab fabric in my stash. I don't know what it is. Can you help me find it? It's really just a community of you can ask questions. I used to answer all the questions and now I have so many members that y'all kind of answer the questions for me, which is good because there's a lot of people who have applique questions and I'm not great at that. So, um, it's just a great way where everybody from different walks of life, different like, like I love Lori Holt, I love Bonnie Camille. Well, other people might like Kaif. And so it's like, oh, it's everyone's look and that's great. All right, we've got a few questions. Someone was asking if that was a pattern holder that was sitting over there. It is. Okay, so I have shown this before. This is my pattern holder that I use when I'm sewing. Um, it doesn't work as great for books, but um, I, this is what I'll do when I'm sewing. Um, I got it at Home Goods for I think it was like $7.99 or something. Um, but it's just a it's just a recipe book. It's just a recipe holder. And then this is my little um, this is my selfie light that I put on my cell phone to take photos, but it is not charged. So it's been sitting here for like a month and it hasn't been used but the only way i can find it is if i leave it here and then my kids know where it is so um only one of my four kids has a phone but she does come get my selfie light and then she likes to tell me that i don't know how to use my selfie light and i'm like that's fine um someone's asking uh if you could repeat the name of your group and what social media site is it on okay so it's called kimberly's stitch squad it's on facebook um yeah all right, um, and someone was asking out of curiosity, how can we live so far from work if it's your shop? Okay, so I live really far from work because um, school districts. So I live in Austin. Austin is a great city, um, but you can't build in Austin. Like, you can't build a business in Austin. So our business is actually um, on I-35 south of Austin and um, the school district that I wanted my kids to be in that's a better school district is further away so it's all like yeah it's a straight um it's not like a bad drive it's just long so okay um I think that's all the questions we have okay and then if you have ideas for future live streams put them on YouTube so Lily can see them or put them in my group Kimberly Stitch Squad so we can see them and sorry about all the technical difficulties today but that's like happens so see y'all next time. All right.